Hello everyone and welcome to today's Incredible India webinar. I'm Dan McDonald from Baxter and today is Thursday, December 12th, 2019. Just before we get started, I'd like to let all of you know that if you have any questions during this webinar, just type them into the Q&A box, which is found in your Zoom toolbar, and all of those questions will be answered after the presentations have finished. Also, if you have any problems hearing or seeing the presentation, just type a quick message into the chat box and I'll do my best to assist you. Presenting first today is Senthur Kuraman, Assistant Director of India Tourism New York. Hi Senthur, how, how are you today? Hi Dan, how are you? Thank you for the introduction. Uh, oh, you're, you're very welcome. And of yeah, course, since you are already sharing your screen for us, um, you can start whenever you're ready. Yeah, we are ready. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this Incredible India webinar. So I want to introduce myself. My name is Santur Kumaran, Assistant Director based in India Tourism, New York. And my colleague, Mr. Roman Pereira, is a Tourist Information Officer. And also Ms. Priya, she is also Tourist Information Officer in New York. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah. yeah. So now, first we are starting with the, our Incredible India webinar. We want to have a presentation and then after that we will have a small question and answers all session also so first we are starting with the incredible india uh, webinar presentation india is the cradle of the human race the birthplace of human speech the mother of history the grandmother of legend and the great grandmother of tradition our most valuable and most instructive materials in the history of man are treasured up in India only. That was the words from Mark Twain. India is growing strong every year now. That India's ranking at the World Economic Forum, travel and tourism is competitiveness index-wise. India is doing extremely well. In the year 2019, we reached the level of 34th position for this World Economic Forum Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index. India started with the e-visa facility, almost extended to more than 168 countries. And these visas are valid for now. It is increased to almost like a five years also they have increased. And also, this is like you don't need to go to any of the Indian mission or consulate or sending your physically your passports are not necessary. You can get your e-visa through your email and you can take a printout of that. These all things can happen within three business days. So your visa facility will be much easier and you can take a printout and you can reach to the country directly without going to any of your visa facility center directly. And also this visa facility is extended to all the activities related to tourism, business, or medical or cruise also now they have extended. So these facilities are also available in almost like 28 airports, five major seaports like Mumbai, Cochin, Goa, Chennai, and Mangalore. So this e-visa facility is a great attraction for the travel agent or tour operators and the, the uh, tourist advisors want to plan for India. And Ministry of Tourism, in 2010, we launched a code of conduct to be adopted by the travel and tourism industry for safe and honorable tourism. So we have a state level tourism police deployed for added safety and security of tourists. Apart from that, we have 24 by seven toll free multilingual tourist helpline in almost like 12 languages, which can guide you the tourist facilities, what you need to have, or if you want to have any, any queries about tourism, they always help you. So this is like a 24 into seven. Um, telephonically, you can talk to people and the helpline will be always there to support you if, in case of any, any issues if you have in tourism activities. Now the question is why we should visit India? There are a lot of destinations and you all have options of various India place you will lose heritage you can see a lot of fairs and festivals 
almost every day. There is no, not a single day without the fairs and festivals in India. And also shopping is very popular. Apart from that, Indian cuisine, which is so popular all over the world. People are fond of Indian food. They want to experience how they cook, how they uh, really feed people. You can experience in India. And apart from that, mice. Meetings, incentives, and conference and exhibitions are getting very big in India due to the infrastructure development in major cities and uh, tier two cities also. Destination weddings are today's world. People want to get uh, married in India, with like a royal kings and queens, they get married in the palaces, forts. So this is a huge area for India now getting popular. As everyone knows that India has a huge crew cruises like uh, we have a huge uh, sea beaches and we have a river river cruises also we are getting very popular in brahmaputra and uh, ganges apart from that you know people love to play golf we have a golf tourism also we have a lot of golf grounds with the other facilities regular features like uh, beaches are very common in india we have a lot of nice beaches then adventure activities because of Himalayas, we have more than 73% of Himalayas in India, uh, which is giving you ample opportunity for adventure activities, whether you take it a mountaineering or trekking or rock climbing or going to summit new, uh, new summits you plan to India. So this all comes under the adventure. And wildlife, always India is uh, very popular for you, maybe knowing the different animals like a tiger, elephants or if you're going for a lion or you go for a rhinoceros so these are very unique to india with the experience wildlife experience and next ecotourism uh, this is the a new first word in india happening because the we are di not disturbing the nature the tourism and the ecology go hand in hand in many places in india so that places are getting converted to ecotourism activities and rural tourism, because India, we have a lot of uh, villages. The villages are the villages want to show oh, how the village life to the foreign tourists. So this gives opportunity for the foreigner to come to India to see how the farming happens in India or like how it is happening for the wellness. The wellness is very important because of we have a, the very old tradition of Ayurveda yoga and spiritual tourism together it is packaged in such a way that you will get uh, very much de-stressed with your wellness tourism opportunities now we want to say why one should visit india for a heritage sites because unesco world heritage sites we have the number one attraction is we always say taj mahal like people say there are two kind of people in the world those who have seen the Taj Mahal and love it, and those who have not seen the Taj and love it. So this is the words from William J. Clinton, but we want to say that uh, everyone would like to Taj. Taj is the major attraction for the first timers. And when you see the Red Fort, this is also one of the famous UNESCO heritage sites in India. And then we come to the hill forts in Rajasthan, and mountain railways in Darjeeling, which is in the eastern part of the country, which is a very, very unique project. Now, when it comes to Kaziranga National Park in Assam, which is only one horned rhinoceros, which is very popular in eastern part of the country. And now come to Ahmedabad, very recently declared as a world heritage city, city India's first city recognized as a UNESCO heritage site. And when it comes to luxury, we have a huge luxury. How the our Maharajas, our kings lived in their palaces, the trains have been created in such a way. Like, uh, we have a different trains. This one is you are watching. This is Maharaja Express, Maharaja Express. And now this is the train they called Golden Chariot. This is also luxurious train. And Palace on Wheels is the pioneer in the luxury train segment, which is very popular, like the Oriental Express. Deccan Odyssey, which is mostly uh, covering the western and southern part of India. And 
and palaces we always want we have a beautiful palaces now it converted into the uh, beautiful resorts and heritage properties this one is a lake palace in the middle of the lake in udaipur and vintage car journeys this is also now one of the tourism activity people come and explore india in vintage car journeys also and as we discussed with you luxury luxury wedding destination uh, people come for a very royal wedding in udaipur or choose their own location in goa for beaches or they plan to do it in a palaces or forts this all possible in india now it's very unique uh, luxury wedding destinations now adventure i would like to introduce my colleague mr roman perera he will talk further about this adventure thank you good afternoon everyone i am roman perera i just taken over from mr sentur kumar an assistant director uh, we'll continue with the adventure now promotion of adventure tourism in india ministry of tourism has launched a set of guidelines on safety and quality norms for adventure tourism in india listing the minimum standards for adventure tourism activities the guidelines cover safety protocol and better provision of insurance coverage nathula lake which is 70% of the himalayas in india as mr sentur kumar has earlier mentioned it also the trekking in the himalayas india now to the world can boast of adventure tourism and this is an example how we are involved in adventure tourism so this is trekking in the himalayas and this is especially happening in the month of uh, in the summer season which is more ideal we also have hot air ballooning which is in rajasthan maharashtra madhya pradesh goa karnataka skiing you must be aware of jammu and kashmir which is in the northern part of the country himachal pradesh uttarakhand and these activities have been presently going on because it is a winter in india now kayaking uttarakhand karnataka samjhe why to roman would you be able to start again would you be able to repeat the part about kayaking because there was uh, the audio cut out for a few seconds i just want you to repeat starting from this slide thank you yeah you talk about yeah kayaking is specially taking place in uttarakhand uttarakhand is located in the northern part of the country and you also are in karnataka which is on the southern part and assam is on the northeast so three different places kayaking takes place and i think this is also getting popularity not only in india but all over the world So India also boasts of all these adventurous sports as well. As I said in Uttarakhand, this again, if you go through the India map, you will find them in Uttarakhand. Is again on the northern part of the country. You can say it is on the foothills of the Himalayas. That is what we can. That is the identity. Paragliding. Again, this is, takes place in Himachal Pradesh, Kerala, Goa. now you may ask us why in only certain places the result is the climatic conditions the topography these all counts tiger safari ranthambhore bandogar kanna jim corbett when we talk of wildlife sanctuary we boast of the big five and among big five this is one of the five that is tiger we have lion we have rhino we have elephant we have the camel the big five one specialty we have rhino mm. india boasts of one horn rhino which is in assam beaches and backwaters when we talk of beaches and backwaters like goa the other day i was in usto convention and i was told that there were some participants in usto convention they were from miami when i asked them where are you coming from they say we are from miami but then they said introduce themselves as goa i said why do you say of goa there is similarity between goa and miami beaches are so popular 
So what I want to say, they have taken the standard of Goa beaches to Miami Beach. So you can imagine how beautiful these beaches are. And not only that, the beaches in Goa are very clean and the sand over is a silver sand, which is rarely available. Baga Beach again in Goa, Havelock Island. Now you may see the India map on the southern part of the country, around 1,200 nautical miles, you have Andaman and Nicobar Islands, which is also part of the territory of India. This again is a beach resorts. Backwaters in Kerala, Goa and Karnataka. I don't think that there is anyone who doesn't know about Kerala. Kerala also is called God's own country. Kerala boasts of yoga, Ayurveda, and as far as yoga and Ayurveda is concerned, it links with the culture, it links with the ancient civilization of the country, which is 5,000 years old. The country civilization is 5,000 years old. When you talk of Ayurveda, which is a therapy, which is a very ancient therapy for treatment of chronic diseases, and that has originated from this part of the world. Yoga and wellness. So what is the advantage of yoga? One of the top sought after wellness education in the world. With over 32.7 million trips a year, the wellness tradition of India has offered yoga, Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, and homeopathy. And let me tell you, when a person is very desperate, when the illness is catches up the height, it's on the rise, and the person is mentally, physically unstable, the Patients do try for alternative therapies. And the last alternative therapy, after having allopathic treatment, if there is no successful treatment, then they turn towards this alternative therapies, and which is yoga, Ayurveda, Unani, and homeopathy. And this has given good results. This attacks the old chronic diseases. And it has been proved. And we are also proud to say that the Honorable Prime Minister of India in United World, United uh, Nations had announced 21st June as International Yoga Day and which has been observed globally for the last six years. Now my colleague Priya will take over for a little while. Thank you. Thank you, Raman. Good afternoon, everybody. Now, after having such a wonderful uh, information on the different products, uh, we are turning towards mice. Now, uh, mice, as uh, as we have been telling that we are having very good uh, destinations, very good uh, infrastructure for the mice, and many mice conventions are being uh, you know, organized in different parts of the country. Following these are Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Cochin, Agra, Goa, Bengaluru. These are the different metro cities in India who are having world-class airports as well as world-class convention facilities in these parts of the cities. These are the some photos. This is a, in a convention center in Hyderabad. Now we will move towards cruise. We have such a big potential in cruise tourism. We have a 7,500 kilometers coastline in India, and which shows that we have a lot of potential uh, for cruises. Almost 950 cruise ships are called um, every year on the coast of Indian uh, shores. and. They are, um, there are many uh, cruise, uh, I mean, uh, passengers who are coming by the cruise. Even for your information, the e visa which has been introduced, it is introduced, it was initially only for the people, for the passengers who are coming by the air, uh, from by air. But now the visa, mm -hmm. e visa facility is extended for the cruise uh, passengers who are coming by cruise also. So whoever is coming by cruise, they can also get the visa for the, um, uh, they can apply for e-visa and they can get this e-visa who are coming by uh, cruise uh, in India. Now we have uh, then also as I, uh, of course we are, uh, as 
we have developed airports world class airports have been developed in india and in constructed in india at the same time we are also organize um, uh, building world uh, good having uh, we are improving our infrastructure on the uh, ports and so we are doing uh, we are making we are renovating good ports in india now we will move towards art and culture of course we have different parts of uh, different forms of art and culture we always say every 100 miles you will see different um, food different cuisine different art different culture this is one of the we, these are the few uh, pictures on the um, indigenous handicrafts again as i told you cuisine i think cuisine uh, we are uh, we have uh, we have lot of cuisine uh, i mean we are very uh, uh, we have indians famous for our indian spices herbs and of course india uh, indian cuisine is famous all over the world people are visiting indian restaurants i mean uh, in their countries but i think i believe that if you really want to taste the real cuisine then you should visit india i think that makes the, the that taste will give you that real taste you will get and of course we have cuisine for different uh, for different state for different uh, areas we have a different cuisine and that cuisine goes as per the uh, weather condition as per the um, uh, topographic conditions of that uh, state and then the cuisine in some part of the area you will see the cuisine is uh, uh, see if you are in the coastal part of area then of course you will see a lot of rice and uh, rice related um, um, uh, food items you will get but if you are in the other if you are in the other parts of india if where the wheat is grown then the wheat related products you will get to eat and of course depending on the weather condition whether you will see the the food will be spicy or the food will be uh, mild so these are the different uh, criteria and you will you can enjoy those different types of cuisine in different states of india let me tell you about cuisine one more addition since the seminar has been a uh, webinar has been happening in toronto let me add that Mississauga in Brampton, there are so many Indian restaurants. So before going to India, you can definitely try the taste of Indian food. Yeah. Then we will move towards Bollywood. Of course, Bollywood films are uh, known to everyone and all over the world. People are crazy about the Bollywood films. So, and we have more than 1,200 movies which are produced in india in 14 different languages every year so um, the total annual theatrical admissions in indian cinemas are around 3 billion compared to 1.5 billion tickets sold annually in us so this diff, uh, i mean if you really want to see the bollywood uh, uh, this film city you can definitely visit mumbai then this is the website this is an incredible india website if you want to get any kind of a information any kind of um, any kind of a information on india then you can definitely log on to our website called incredibleindia.org and uh, we have, where our videos and different types of photos are also available on this website Again, we are on social medias. We are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, we are on Instagram, Pinterest, Vimeo, Periscope, YouTube. So we have different um, things. Uh, we are available on all social medias. Okay. Now, here is our presentation over. I would like to give you some more information. Um, I would like to give you some more information, what kind of uh, promotional activities are or support, how can we work together to promote, uh, to promote our, this uh, country or uh, our, this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, to promote the country or how we can start work together. So one thing is that if you need any kind of a tourism promotional material, we have more literature available, brochures are available in uh, our office. 
so you can send an email to us you can approach us you can call us we will definitely mail you those brochures to your place then secondly we have a we can we have a co-op activities or join your brochure co-op is there so if you are printing brochure on india so uh, out of the uh, brochure on india which you are printing half of the brochure half of the pages of those brochures on india we can share uh, we can share the cost of those brochures then we can do joint advertisements on the digital or um, uh, different uh, on the different social medias then we can also do joint promotion we can work together if you need uh, if you want us to come to if you have certain agents and they want information on india they want um, uh, they want to start selling india and they want us to conduct some present or agent promotion i mean uh, jointly then we, we can definitely uh, do that joint promotion activity i mean we can do that joint presentation also thirdly we have um, hospitality schemes so there are certain tour operators who want to start selling india but they say that uh, they have not been to these places so um, they want to experience of course without experiencing any place or getting uh, understanding any place you cannot sell that product so we have a hospitality scheme under that hospitality scheme we can um, we can uh, send the they can the tourist tour operators can approach the india tourism office for the fam trip and uh, under that uh, we uh, we can uh, like uh, we can give them full hospitality or partial hospitality and we can uh we will have to we have to forward that proposal to our headquarters in delhi and once the approval is received we can sponsor their trip so these are the some things we can uh, we are doing for promotion of tourism uh hope uh, we have tried we have tried to we have tried to cover as much we can uh, we can move towards question and answer session if you have any questions please uh, please feel to ask Thank you so much, Priya. That's great. And is um, if someone were to reach out through uh, through your Facebook page, would that be okay as well? We don't have a Facebook page, but uh, I will give our email ID. So that will be uh, the, the Facebook page which I gave you is of our Ministry of Ministry. Tourism's pa Facebook page. So uh, okay. basically, if they need to uh, reach out us, our uh, they email. can uh, they can email us. The email ID is. N Y at N I T O N Y C dot com. It is in our website. Again, I'm repeating. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, again, I'm repeating. N Y at I T O N Y C dot com. This is our uh, email ID. And also, more information. We have no India seminar. we will be organizing in toronto and uh, ottawa so we will definitely we will update you all once we have your contact details you can your presence you can join us there the main um, thing is that we today we couldn't offer you any indian food but when you are coming to the no india seminar you can explore the indian delicacy whatever you have seen today we will try to make it uh, you know that will be in the month of january in the month of january uh, please uh, we will inform you well in advance so that will be a one more attraction and also now if you have any question answers anything if you want to ask please you can do that thank you dan oh fantastic yeah thank you and uh of course i welcome everyone to submit any questions that you may have to either the q and a box or the chat box um and those can both be found in your black zoom toolbar if you just move your mouse around you can see your uh their black zoom toolbar will pop up and the second icon should be the q and a icon and i see that one question has been submitted already so this is from maureen maureen asks who should i contact to do a joint promotion in trade fairs as we are a trekking company in india that would like to promote in north america and the uk yeah please uh, uh, mr maureen you can contact us as we gave you the email address you can write to us definitely we will get back to you thank you great 
So what I will do is I will just include that email address as well in the thank you email that I send to everybody. Um, so as a follow-up, uh, it, it'll be in there as well. So it'll be in, in that follow-up email. Yeah. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Maureen. Oh, Maureen says thank you. Thank you so much, Maureen. And Ruth says, can you please um, – can you please show the contact information and also where in Toronto are you? Oh, uh, so actually they're located in New York, but maybe I'll let them answer this. Where in Toronto are you and are you offering any FAM information on tours for us? Thanks. So um, uh, would one of you be able to, yeah, so they're located in New York City. Uh, and I will definitely email you the contact information. Uh, but um, uh, Roman, would you or your colleagues be able to, um, do you not have information offhand about uh, FAM information or would you rather do that yes. through, uh, through email? We would recommend them to contact us on our email ID, with, which we are typing now. And the email oh, ID, good. and uh, we will get back to them. We will uh, revert them accordingly. That, yeah, that works great. Okay. Thank you, Priya. Yeah. And I'll let people best know. in Toronto at 60 Broad Street West. But the office got closed down on 31st October 2018. And as a part of restructuring of the offices, overseas offices, we closed down Los Angeles office and Toronto office and got it merged to New York office. So we are presently best in New York, looking after all the promotional activities of North America, which also includes Canada. So you are oh, yeah. welcome okay. to contact us on the email address and the address given here. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. And so, um, so yeah, Ruth, you should see the answer to that uh, in the chat. In the sorry, in the Q and A box there. Um, so they've answered your question via text and have their contact info there uh, with their email address at the very bottom. But of course, uh, I'll just include it in, a, in an email to you as well, just in case. But you will see it there in the Q&A box. And uh, Charlene asks, hi, is it challenging to visit northern India and southern India in, say, 15 to 18 days? Yeah, it's like uh, 15 days are very good to cover northern India, maybe uh, if they want to do first time. But if they want to do both uh, south and north, maybe 15 days is a, a little bit challenges, you have to choose the destination. Probably you can do the golden triangle. That is, uh, we always call the first timers. They always try for the golden triangle in India, which is starting with New Delhi, Agra, then Jaipur. So which comes with like a minimum five nights. If you can give justice, maybe each destination, then it goes up to five to seven nights. You can cover New Delhi, then Taj Mahal in Agra, then palaces and forts in uh, Jaipur, and museums. There are a lot of museums also to cover. So this may take you around seven nights. Apart from that, if you want to travel to south or western part of the country, uh, definitely like Kerala, like somebody, thank you for the question that uh, Rita Kalana asking about, uh, check out Kerala. Uh, yeah, definitely we will send you the information about Kerala, which is very popular for the backwaters and um, also Ayurveda. It's very famous things. We, we will definitely send you, Mr. Kalan. And uh, now again, there is a question from Ru Ruth that any cruise lines, um, Taj Mahal, I think some cruise lines, what they do, they, you may be coming to Mumbai. The, they will stop there on the cruise. Then after that, you can travel your plan because the cruise may be there for two to three days sometime. So accordingly, you can fly from Mumbai to uh, Delhi and then you can travel to Agra, Delhi. You can cover it within two nights and you can come back third day to your Mumbai port and you can your cruise. There are possibilities out there. Oh, that's great. And Thank you. I think uh, Ruth, we, yeah. yeah. Any any other questions? Definitely, we would love to answer your questions. Thanks for your all uh, queries and interest on India. And your support and participation. And your support, and you have taken time to participate in this event. We are really very happy. 
to have you and uh, definitely we will look forward to meet all of you when we are coming to canada and also when we have opportunity to know more about india so the no india seminar will help you if you are based in uh, toronto or you maybe if you are in watawa definitely we are doing, going to do these two programs in the month of january and during that time definitely we will talk more about the other opportunities also with you all thank you oh that's great thank you so much any other and uh, yeah there's a couple more so uh charlene said uh oh thank you thank you for that i'm pretty familiar with karata through most guided tour companies um yeah. they only, most guided tour offer uh, companies only seem to offer co coaching i'm not sure the pronunciation there uh, yes. Two very different, two very different locations, no doubt. Um, any other recommendations would be fabulous. Yes, in in Kerala, like uh, always, people say Kerala is a, a God's own country, and uh, Kerala have a, the major port is in Cochin. Cochin is the Kochi or Cochin. The current name is Kochi, but they call it still Cochin. Uh, that is a huge terminal for the cruise tourism, and one can come and land there. And then they can go for uh, like can you repeat that last part? Um, sorry, can you repeat that last part? You cut out for about five, yeah. five, ten seconds there. Yes, um, one one can come to Kerala. We have a Cochin. We is well connected with the international airport, and also the cruise terminal is there. Apart from that, it is well connected by road and train with all parts of the country. And once you are in Cochin, you can see the uh, palace. You can see from there, you can go to the backwaters, which is in Alapula, they call it. In Alapula, there is a lot of uh, backwaters, means backwater activities like houseboats are there, which has, it's like a private room with a kitchen and the uh, service, people will be serving you food. And, uh, and also we have a, Ayurveda, such as exclusive treatment, this all all possible in the houseboat itself. And also there are a lot of uh, therapies happening for this wellness tourism. So this is what the happening places in Kerala. Apart from uh, Cochin, I will say even the beaches are very popular in Kovalam beaches in Tiruvannandapuram, that is the capital of Kochi, uh, Kerala. And also there are a lot of um, uh, resorts which uh, specializes about the Vedic uh, Ayurvedic uh, treatments for the uh, people like tourists want to explore. Yeah, that is also possible. Thank you. No, thank you. Yeah, and Ruth other... was wondering if uh, if you guys have a 1-800 number. 1-800, yes, we have a um, we have a number okay. So our number, which we have given you, two one two five eight six four nine zero one, which is for uh, US number, we have. And thank you. If you have any other questions, please. Hello. Hello, Mr. Dan. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I think I had uh, I had muted myself by accident there. Uh, so Sandy says, fabulous webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And thank you for everyone for your time from my team also, Mr. Roman. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, everyone, you, so, thank you for joining us. And Priya. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And Charlene says, very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you. thank you. We also thank uh, Baxter Media for organizing this webinar. Such a wonderful evening. Wonderful uh, afternoon we had. Yeah. And we will look forward to take this more. more. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for presenting today. We really appreciate it. It was great having you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, before we wrap, wrap up, I would definitely like to let everyone know um, thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to attend this webinar. We very much appreciate it. And if you happen to sign in a few minutes late, the, uh, a recording of this webinar will be made available on the Baxter Media YouTube channel tomorrow morning. So uh, if you check Baxter Media on YouTube, um, our channel is the one that pops up there. We have our blue and white logo that you'll see. And that's yeah. where we archive all of our webinar recordings. 
So I'd like to give a very huge thank you to Senthur Kumaran, Roman Pereira, and Priya Dorinkar. Um, thank you all so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a wonderful day. You as well. Take care, everyone.